we have a couple of important pieces of business. We have to appoint two new members to this board. We've had some vacancies for a number of months. And also we have an applicant here uh, from the copy board that we have to hear. But um, before we do all that, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, we lost an important member of this board recently. Our longtime chairman, Keith Johnson, passed away on July 3rd. And uh, Keith was kind of a special member of this community. Uh, he was a certified, youngest certified ski school instructor. He uh, was an excellent skier. Built thousands of people to ski around here. Uh, he was a member of the Professional Ski Instructors of America for 40 years. I didn't know all this. Uh, he's an owner operator of Johnson Construction, which included logging and the skillful operation of heavy equipment. Uh, he initially built many of the roads and ponds in this area. I'm reading from his obituary. Uh, he was a town of Shandaken Highway Superintendent. He was a 35-year member of this board. And I don't even know how many years he was chairman. 20 years? Uh, long time. Yeah, he was on and off, yes. Long time. Uh, active on the John of 10 Town of Shandaken Ambulance Squad for more than 30 years. Uh, he was a founding member of that. He was a life member of the Shandaken Alvin Hose Company, certified operator of Jaws of Life. Uh, he coached the Shandaken Little League, volunteered as a den master, the local Cub Scouts. I mean, it goes on and on. So um, we've lost an important member of this community, and we've lost an important member uh, of, of this committee. Um, Keith's, Keith was the institutional memory of this committee, and his institutional memory and his experience and his wisdom will be sorely missed. So as my first official act is now the sole uh, Chairman of this committee, I would like to ask uh, the people assembled for a minute of silence in honorary of Mr. Keith Johnson. Keith, God bless you. May you rest in peace. Thank you for your service. Amen. Amen. Thank you, people. Um, so uh, we need to hear our applicant. But before we do that, uh, we need to move to appoint our two new members of the board. So I make a motion that uh, Mr. Uh, Henry Williams Jr., Hank Williams, be appointed the uh, new member of the Shed Dickin Zoning Board of Appeals. May I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Well, Congratulations. Great. So upon the approval of that appointment by the town board on uh, August 3rd, you will then be officially a uh, member of this committee and you will serve out Wolf Reese's term, or however long that is. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that um, Shane Dakin uh, Zoning Board appoint Elizabeth Canisol as a member of the Shane Dakin Zoning Board. May I have a second? We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. So moved. Congratulations. And same thing. Upon your upon the approval of our appointment, you will be an official member. I believe you have 30 days to uh, sign a uh, oath of office with the mm -hmm. town clerk. So, okay, great. So these people have voting privileges at the next meeting. They don't now, but we would like to have everybody uh, hear the reason for your appeal, uh, what your appeal is, and the reason for it. So, uh, could somebody please approach? Not too close. Sure, thank you. So, I'm uh, Steve Sanchez. I'm the, the new owner of the Copper Hood Retreat just down the road on, on Route 28. And this is Martin. He's an engineer working for Catterskill Associates. And um, I'd like to introduce myself and, and the project, and then I'll let sort of Martin uh, get into the nitty gritty in terms of are asked and, and what variants we're, we're seeking. Um, but we are redeveloping the, the Copperhood retreat, um, keeping the use the same as, as a retreat, but 
changing the focus a little bit from just wellness to wellness and, um, and work. A lot of people uh, can work from anywhere, so we put in a high-speed internet connection into the Copperhood Retreat, and we're looking for freelancers, companies to send their employees to work in this type of environment and, and get out of the city. Um, the Copperhood currently has 22, is permitted by the town to have 22 rooms, an 88-seat restaurant, and a, a spa. We're going to decrease the number of seats at the restaurant and increase the number of the rooms. Um, the footprint is going to stay relatively the same, um, but because we are seeking uh, site plan approval from the planning board and um, new zoning regulations require for all the different uses that the Copper Hood has historically had now for 50 plus years, um, the new zoning code requires us to have a number of parking spaces that we cannot meet because of the restrictions that the, the site dimensions and the proximity of the Asopus Creek um, prevents us from meeting. So we're um, here to see if we could get a variance to um, redevelop the Copperhood Retreat with more limited parking, still increasing the parking, but have a little bit less parking that is required by, uh, by the zone of laws. Awesome. Uh, <coughs> As Stephen mentioned, my name is Martin from Catterskill Associates. I do have some paperwork for you guys. Did you get your lines and whatnot? Please. Oh, I apologize. Martin from Catterskill Associates. I do have some drawings and stuff for you guys, some, some paperwork, uh, a couple of letters and whatnot addressing the project. Is it okay if I bring them up to you? Yeah. No. Please, by all means. We do have full size drawings, but I figured 11 by 17 might be a little bit easier for everyone. These are our current site plan for the site. So you're actually um, renaming? You're using the naming of the top yes, of the sir. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> that's a uh, 17 page site plan again. It really is usually on 24 by 36. Yeah. A little easier to read then. It includes a full boundary survey. Mm -hmm. You might just pass those down. Those are the applications. This is a current survey. Yeah, that's, that's the current the survey. Page. Oh, yes, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, that, right? You're actually going to get a full size copy. Oh, boy. Bring a wheelbarrow. She's a <laughs> professional. <laughs> I have more of the full, full size copy. Howie loves when I bring lots of paper. So, what we're proposing is a renovation of an existing commercial facility, as Stephen mentioned. Uh, there's not really a change in use. Currently, there is a restaurant, a spa, and, uh, and a hotel, so we're going to maintain that. Um, there's one letter in here I want to make sure everybody gets a copy of. Excuse me, did I hear you say you're increasing the number of uh, rooms for habitation? Yes, so currently there are 22, 22 rooms. We'd like to increase that to 30 rooms. There's also two residences. We're going to decrease that to one residency okay. um, on site. And I do have a letter that kind of just spells out all of the. Sure, not one. And uh, to clarify, the 22 rooms. Um, have 29 bedrooms and 32 beds. The, the, the town certificate of occupancy lists uh, the 32 beds. A lot of the rooms are, are suites. Historically, the Copper Hood or uh, Hotel du Moline, before it was called the Copper Hood, had, had 30 little rooms. And the, the previous owners um, joined some of the rooms and made some bigger suites. But, um, you know, in terms of square footage dedicated to rooms, it's going to be, be very similar. What was the previous name? Uh, Hotel du Moline. How do they spell that? Um, like windmill in French, like oh, and uh, Hotel du Moline. Oh, okay. Moulin. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, from, I'm from Moline, Illinois. Yeah, okay. Well, here, there's, the, uh, there's an old menu from the, uh, the old property. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay, now I'm looking, you were adding some additional septic on your... Yeah, we're actually going to be, uh, we're going to be replacing the existing septic system. 
We've already had conversations with the CWC and the DEP. Yeah. Um, because I know the roof go by fixture when you design the <coughs> yeah. yeah, so septic systems for the hotel will be based up. This is a little bit of a tricky situation, right? Because every different commercial activity has different um, different flow values for uh, mm -hmm. for that based on what you're doing. Hotel rooms are 110 gallons per day per, per room. Mm -hmm. um, whereas seating in a restaurant, I believe is 27 off the top of my head. Yeah. And there, you know, everything has a little bit different. Residential use where you simply go by... Um, by bedroom, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've actually, you know, done a complete design with all of those numbers that includes both the, uh, the restaurant, the spa, the uh, facilities, uh, in the in the main building, everything we've done a complete design for that, which DEP is seen. I believe that they're you know they're going to be easily willing to approve it as it's a replacement septic system that needs to be done. Uh, we're actually proposing a Presby system under a new parking Excuse lot. Excuse me, you're proposing what? A Presby septic system under a new parking lot. It's an advanced treatment system because we're going to be so close to you know near the Asopus there. We want to make sure that we get it treated really well. So. And just to, and just one quick thing, we're not um, we're not increasing septic capacity. The existing facility yeah. has um, has a, an existing speedies permit that permits approximately forty seven hundred gallons per day, mm -hmm. and because we're reducing the number of restaurant seats to gain those extra <coughs> hotel rooms, we're not increasing you know flow into into the septic. Yes, exactly. It's actually one of our mitigating factors. Um, so the way that the zoning is written. We are required to calculate the number of parking spaces based on each activity within the within the entire commercial facility. So you need X amount of uh, parking for the spa, X amount of parking for the restaurant, X amount of parking for the residents, and X amount of parking for the hotel rooms themselves. And in a letter that I've given out to everybody, I actually listed out all of the uh, all of the necessary spaces based on the existing conditions and based on our proposed conditions. Based on the existing conditions, we would need 125 parking spaces. Based on what we're proposing, we would be increasing that to 149 as the minimum that we would need based on your zoning. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's just no way that we can fit 149 spaces on the site. What we can do is increase um, to 55 spaces on the site. Currently, there's about 15. They're not actually well defined on the site. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that parking lot. It's not marked in any way, but you can roughly fit about 15 spaces, uh, cars on there. So we want to build a parking lot down on the lower, the lower level um, below that parking lot. We'll keep that parking lot. We'll mitigate it a little bit, try to make it a little bit bigger, and then add spaces down, uh, down on the flat. Okay. We are also proposing a bus parking area uh, so you can get a bus in there. <laughs> Excuse me. We're working with uh, DOT to change up the entrances as well to bring those into compliance. Um, and they've been happy with what we've said so far. That's all in that site plan there. Okay. A uh, couple of mitigating things. Reasons, reasons why we believe that it's um, reasonable to ask for a variance. Um, one, this is more of a all-inclusive resort type setting. This isn't a... Uh, you know, this isn't a strip mall where people are going to be going to different areas individually. Most people are going to come to the hotel and use the amenities of the hotel, the spa, the restaurant. Uh, another key factor, so I believe there's going to be a lot of overlap. Another key factor for us is that, <coughs> I just want to look at my numbers. The required spaces for the dining is actually 59 spaces. We can only have 73 seats in the restaurant in total. So if you were to average that at one car for three seats, I believe it comes out to about 24. I have it written up there. Yeah, 25 spaces. 25 spaces. Um, so that's just kind of another mitigating factor for us. So. And I have several others listed out if you want me to go through them. Um, but I feel like this is, I don't, I don't want to get too, <laughs> too long winded here. I feel like it's pretty. Uh, pretty simple thing. Basically, we're going to increase the parking by 400% from what's there now, and unfortunately, I don't think we can squeeze too much more in there. And I'll, I'll add that 
for example, some of the numbers, because they're based on square footage, are a little deceiving. Like an 8,000 square foot spa, the vast majority of that square footage is a 20 by 60 indoor pool and deck surrounding it. So it's a relatively large floor area, but in reality it has a small gym, a small yoga studio, and a few treatment rooms for massages. So people outside of the hotel guests that come in and potentially get a massage treatment, it may be a few at a time, but we certainly don't think we would need 40 spaces in addition to what's required for the hotel use, for example. Uh, and, and a big, the one last thing I want to add, a big part of the, uh, the overall plan for the marketing plan for the site is to have corporate events where someone rents a, rents a charter bus and brings their, brings their business, you know, brings all their employees up, rents out you know, a bunch of rooms for the weekend, has meetings and trainings and things of that nature. So, you know, a lot of the business is going to be coming in that bus. That's why we added that bus uh, parking area. Yeah. Oh yes, that's a good point. Uh, staggered use, um, which is something that we did we did put in the letter. <coughs> Basically, you know, if someone was going to use the spa, come in for the day and use the spa, generally speaking, they're going to come in, they're going to use the spa kind of during the day, versus someone, you know, a family going to the Copperhood, um, I'm sorry, to the Branches restaurant for dinner at night. So a lot of staggered use in that, in that instance. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so um, the, uh, the way the zoning code reads, this is uh, 116-24, number three. In the case of a combination of uses on a single parcel, the requirement for off-street parking spaces shall be the sum of the requirements of the various individual uses, unless it can be established by the applicant to the satisfaction of the planning board during site plan review that staggered hours of use would permit reduction of this requirement. So this is basically this is basically the red we need the variance on. Um, and they just explained why that was a reasonable request for variance. Um, so we can't, like I said, we can't, uh, we can't rule anything until we have a public hearing. This is not a to as a state law. Yep. Uh, so what we have to do is uh, call that public hearing for the uh, meeting next month. Uh, that has to be announced in our paper of record, which is the stock times. I think still um, two weeks prior to the meeting, and then that allows neighbors or any concerned citizens to uh, show up either in support or in objection. We have to take that into consideration. So, unless there's any questions, you guys have. Mike, Moriello, mm -hmm. just two, two points. Okay. There is also an addendum here. I'm the lawyer, actually, for the new people. I'm the okay. lawyer for the applicant. There is an addendum that goes through the five criteria for the grant of the variance and the balancing test that's dated March 30th that um, we prepared. Okay. There's also a lawful segmentation under seeker um, memorandum that I put in because the planning board wanted us to come to this board, get through the variance um, first um, before they wanted to do their coordinated review with the rest of the agency. So um, from a seeker standpoint, I don't think there's very many impacts, at least environmentally. So that is not, in my mind, a big, a big leap for an unlisted action. But I wanted to cover all the bases. Um, the one other thing that I think the board has to do tonight besides schedule the public hearing, would be to refer this matter to Dennis Doyle and the Ulster County Planning Board for a full statement of the proposed action under 239M of the general municipal law because we are within 500 feet of a state highway. So. Oh, we yeah. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so no parking area shall encroach on any portion of the required front yard or within 50 feet of New York State Route 28. Yeah, so, we, we? so we're required to refer, the board's required to refer it to the Ulster County Planning Board, and we could help, I'm sure, Martin and help us to get the packet. I for think that. in the past, if I remember right, Elizabeth would have read, had to get a variance and had to uh, work with New York State DOT to put up that uh, wall. So <laughs> the right. wall, the wall has come into into play. Excuse me. The wall has come up. We've been in conversations with DOT. We are planning on taking the wall down. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they're happy about that. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, the site plan shows the wall. Yeah, so I noticed uh, it. That's why I mentioned. I remember in the past that uh, she went around with DOT on that one. Yeah, there's three entrances currently yeah. on that parcel too. Um, 
the furthest one down is going to be closed off. Okay, you mentioned we're gonna getting have, rid of a residence on the property? Yes, there's currently two, two apartments, okay. uh, residences. Uh, one of them will be eliminated uh, during, during this uh, renovation. But not the house, which would be on the western end. The, the house is not part of not this part of site plan. Okay. She, she okay. Um, the, the previous owners did not sell the house. Okay. Just, okay. Yeah, just the, the hotel. Yeah, okay. yeah it is. And the entrances were actually going to be, <laughs> there's an, an old existing entrance kind of in the middle of the parcel there. We're going to be revamping that taking down that wall, expanding that so that it can be yeah, so in and out. Right the turning radius. Exactly, yes. yeah, for the bus. Yes. Um, and we, we did have a, a gateway meeting with Dennis Doyle and the Ulster County uh, Planning Board. Um, I think it was in November, uh, and a DOT representative was there. He informed us that we had to uh, do something about the wall, which we incorporated into the site plan. Um, yeah. So, oh yeah, I guess it'd be up to your office to notify the county, Dennis Doyle. Yes, that would be the secretary's. Yeah. Okay. With yeah. the public hearing, do you need us to send out the certified mailers? No, uh, the town does that. Oh, awesome. Well, certified mailers to to um, only to adjacent landowners. Mm -hmm. Is that, yes. is that correct? Yeah. And one of the adjacent landowners is a cemetery, so. Nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> this is Shandake and made us an angry ghost. So it's up to you guys. Um, well, so also I did a uh, site visit today, and um, so Steve, may I um, count on you being as gracious to me as you would be to these guys if they want to do a site plan? A site visit, absolutely. Yeah. Any any one of you are welcome to to come and, and see the site. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions? Not for me. Okay. So, um, take it under consideration. We'll have to hear the uh, public input and we can rule on this case. But so far, it's just the parking issue, correct? Yes, that's the only thing that we're looking for a variance on. Okay. The date of that meeting, Mr. Chairman, would be of the public hearing? Pardon? What, what would be the date of the public hearing? Our next scheduled meeting, which will be the third Wednesday, of the month? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I think I have it. It's, uh, it's Do you need a motion to go to public hearing? Okay. Yes. The 19th of August. Wednesday, the 19th of August is the third one. Okay, uh, so I, um, I'm making a motion to schedule a public hearing. What was it, 13th of August? 19th. 19th of August. 19th of August. And I second that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, so ruled. Uh, public hearing. Well, we will see you on the 19th of August. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate you all getting together and making yeah. it happen. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I just have a couple of questions. With you know sure. the, the existing parking area, and yeah. there's kind of a pretty steep drop off, and I've always envisioned somebody pulling in late at night, maybe their first visit. Yeah, I think, I think we need to. But the site plan I think includes guardrails and proper pavers yes. and parking, uh, yes. you know, signage and. Yeah. Safety, so, safety things. Does yeah. it happen to your knowledge? Is anybody just it? <laughs> I hope not. not. Not to my knowledge. Not since August, at least, but maybe in the past. Well, uh, I saw yeah. your plan. You do have bollards. Yep, we have bollards. Yeah, there's so. a there's a lot going on. I mean, yeah. and we're happy to 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 tell you more about it too, if you if you kind of want to go through it or not. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Did you get uh, copyright uh, usage and um, um, permission from Alexander Calder for your logo? Um, so he was he was a big inspiration. Um, uh -huh. He, um, you know, the the idea of, of, of meshing technology and nature is is part of the branch's brand and Calder using wind and motion um, to power technology. In his case, the mobiles was was a big inspiration for the uh, for the logo. Was that a swipe from him though, or you, or that you just swiped the idea? I'm sorry. Was that a, was that a swipe from one of his actual uh, 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 sculptures? Um, no, no, it was designed by a, by a graphic designer, but it was inspired by some of the sculptures. I'm I glad you recognized it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm just curious about that. Yeah. Uh, with, if there are any other questions, like, if there are no other questions, I think we can adjourn the meeting. I second that. The only other thing I'd say is check the swimming pool. Uh, uh, years ago, I was asked as, as a professional engineer to go over there because the pool was losing water. They had a water hammer incident that burst some of the pipe and fittings on the pool system. Hmm. And they were losing upwards of 100 gallons a day out of that pool. 
So they rather than tear up the Tarotza deck, I think they blanked off some of the piping. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Luckily, we're not losing 100 gallons right now, but <laughs> it's probably because they, they, they did a short-term fix that we'll probably they have did. to investigate. Yeah, they I appreciate poured, that. They yeah. poured a new deck slab, put down to Rotsa, and afterwards had this water hammer incident. They asked me to step in and take a look. I ran a set of calculations, confirmed it was, in fact, water hammer, and I said, well, you might have to take up the deck, and they opted instead to just cap off lines. Maybe okay. you Maybe you should hire this guy, but only after. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. Okay. So that's. No, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Before you get too deep into this project, you might want to. Yeah, no, there's, um, you know, it's it's a very old property, so there's definitely a lot of things that will come up and we'll have to take care of. Howie, do you have a comment? Yeah, um, the Wadinsky, um, they, they um, filed for a lot line adjustment, and it, it brought to my attention the issue that this new building that they put up without a permit or any inspections would replace this building. Is that on the Papa Hood property, though? No, this no, is a uh, Wodinsky property in Willow Valley. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is, Okay, so we're on to another show. Well, that, thank you. Yeah, it sounds like you guys have stuff to take care of. Very good. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, can I grab that? That's my only copy. <laughs> no, I want to keep it. No. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, we wish you all good luck with your project, and we'll see you in a month. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, folks. Yes. Anyway, it's my recollection that they brought this proposal back in the winter, and I believe it was scheduled for a public hearing. It never happened. I know we've seen this before. Yes. So I'm suggesting that maybe we could schedule this for a public hearing in the next meeting so that we can have the applicant move forward or you said good. Yeah, let's go to schedule a public hearing. Yeah. I make a motion to schedule a public hearing. Okay. Do I have a second? Second, please. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay, calling a public hearing for the Walensky in the next meeting. So you have to convey all this to Carrie. Yeah. So, um, any other business? May I have a motion to adjourn? Well, second. Uh, before we adjourn, I would like to enter a uh, resolution yes. in the record to honor the memory of Keith Johnson. Mark, or, um, Mark exp expounded on Keith's life and who he was nothing to add to that except to say that he leaves a mighty big pair of shoes to be filled and a mighty big boy. And as I said, I would just like to enter a uh, resolution honoring his memory and try not to forget him and try to live up to who he was and what he was. He was just a very special person. Thank you. I'll second that motion because I totally agree that um, this person had a precise influence on my participation here and I think probably it's the case of all of us here. So I second that motion. May I? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Motion honoring Keith Johnson and his contribution to this committee. Any other old business? Any other new business? May I have a motion to adjourn? May I have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you, folks. Thank you all. Next, uh, yeah, next month we'll have a full house. Okay, to our new members, we wish you all good luck. We hope you realize what you let yourself in for. Yeah, and thanks for showing up. Mark tried to scare me away. Oh, okay. She's in flat. Truthfully, they are a good professional club. I'll see. I'm sure it'll be as much fun as the SDR committee was. There's more. There's the SDR committee was. More. Quiet. What do you Mark, Hank, and I were all in the short term rental committee. Oh, okay. We're doing work with the Sarah Ewers. Yeah, we're doing a proposal to the town.
I'm so glad that you're, uh, you're healthy again. Thank you so much. I asked the guy that was filling in for you, he's your friend. Yeah, and I would ask him every time. You know, I thought she was coming back. I thought she was coming back. And he said, no, 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 she's going to rest a little bit more. I was sick. Yeah, yeah, you were pretty sick. But in the beginning, they didn't say that you were that sick. You know, and then, then as it went on, you know. And we got talking. So I'm so glad to see you.